Covered in vandalism in the heart of Cherokee Triangle and Louisville's Highland neighborhood is a statue representing a man of dedication to the city. Or is it a statue representing slavery and discrimination? That's a question that has become controversial within the city. Chris Lucan drives by the statue on her way home daily. I feel that this statue is a work of art. It's only one of two equine statues in the state of Kentucky. So what exactly is the statue? The statue erected in 1913 is a depiction of John Breckenridge Castleman, a Confederate war general who later came back to Louisville and contributed to the city's park system. It was erected um, to honor Castleman's role broadly in the community. He served in multiple, multiple capacities as a member of the Louisville School Board at one time, a long, long, long-term member of the Louisville Parks Commission from the 1890 creation of the commission. There's also questioning why the statue is listed as a Confederate monument because the statue was privately funded and the monument doesn't depict Castleman in a Confederate uniform. But if you look closely, it's not a military uniform at all. It's the uh, apparel worn in horse competition. Uh, and Castleman is sitting uh, on Caroline, who was an early member of a new breed, a saddle-bred horse. He was also a horse breeder, by the way, um, that he's sitting on Caroline wearing the garb of someone who is at a, uh, uh, a riding competition. So he's, he's not, doesn't have a sword, doesn't have a military uniform, uh, doesn't have any, uh, any indication that it's a military statue. But the life before Castleman gave back to a city is what others question we should honor. He was a member of Morgan's Raiders. He was involved as a leader in a unit that was committed to invading the North on horseback, attacking a Union Civil War prison, releasing the Confederate soldiers there, when that failed near Chicago, his troops then moved quickly to try to get to St. Louis and to burn Union naval vessels at the port at St. Louis. After some called for the removal, the mayor of Louisville appointed a committee of seven to decide if it was appropriate that statues deemed to be offensive by some, like the Castleman Monument, remain in their current locations. Tom Owen also served as a member on that committee. And but the fact that it's in the middle of that intersection suggests that the citizens of Louisville have lifted up that equestrian statue sitting on a raised spot in the center of a busy intersection, that they have lifted up that person for a citizens of Louisville honor. So the mayor's position is, can that same statue which is honoring John Castleman there in the busy intersection as a piece of publicly supported art. Can that statue be moved to the center of 26th and Broadway in Louisville's densest African-American neighborhood? But others question if the mayor is being fair. I have a couple of issues with what he's saying. One of the reasons why the statue is here it's because he owned this land and sold it to the city of Louisville. There is a correlation between where the statue stands and why it's here. After months of public conversations at various locations and times, the committee delivered a nine-page report to the mayor saying, quote, Monuments to Confederate soldiers were frequently erected as a way to perpetuate systemic racism and bigotry. The letter goes on to say, we must ensure that in our lived experiences, monuments do not serve such purposes. After coming to that conclusion, the city would have just proceeded with removal of Castleman since it sits in the middle of a public street. But there was one problem. The statue lies in a historic preservation district. Because the monument is located in a historic preservation district, uh, you do a, an application process and an appointed committee reviews your case. The committee that reviewed this case was the Cherokee Triangle Architectural Review Committee. 
They ended their process with a tie vote 3-3. to The 3-3 vote is going to be deemed as denied for the landmarks guidelines. In the situation of a tie, the statue is required to remain in its present location, but... By the regulation, that's deemed to not pass. So from there, um, the mayor announced his intention to appeal the decision, and so the appeal has been filed. That appeal reached the Louisville Landmarks Commission, where a final verdict was made. The appeal is approved with the condition. With the appeal being passed, the statue which has stood in the Cherokee Triangle for more than 100 years will soon be gone. This reality now leading some to believe there's a lesson to be learned. I think the biggest lesson that we need to learn is don't put our modern mindset in, into reading about history. Don't do that. You're going to skew it up. People were much different back then and we have gotten better and we are progressing and we're only going to continue to do so. But we need to learn about the past and understand it instead of trying to change it. For the PBS NewsHour Student Reporting Labs, I'm Edward Smith in Louisville, Kentucky.